In this video, we're going to build a wooden frame for a skin-on-frame kayak. Skin-on-frame is uh, where you build a wooden frame and then you stretch some canvas over it and uh, waterproof it with some, uh, some sort of a sealant. So, uh, I've never done it before, so I went ahead and bought some plans and uh, we're going to get started with the wooden frame. In these plans, the wooden frame is two components. They're the cross members that are made out of plywood, and then the chines, or the runners, and those are made out of red uh, cypress. The plans included this huge drawing. I think it's like 54 by 36, and uh, these are the cutouts for the cross members. Uh, it's a PDF file, and uh, Acrobat or Adobe uh, lets you tile the uh, lets you tile the the drawings. So. Uh, this is just regular pieces of paper just taped together. You need to choose the tile option and then it also uh, gives you the option for corner marks. Uh, since the printer doesn't print all the way to the edge of the paper, you've got to trim the paper. So uh, I just used the straight edge and razor blade uh, to the corner marks uh, and that worked out pretty well. So the only trouble here is uh, it would have been nice if they had put this, uh, made this drawing uh, four foot by four foot because they say you need a uh, four foot by four foot piece of plywood which is what this is sitting on but uh, you kind of have to kind of jostle the parts around a little bit so I'm going to cut these out and uh, uh, see if we can get this to fit on the four by four so here's some additional instructions uh, it says that A is the stern, B is the bow, C is the mounting bracket I need to make two of those, D is a paddle blade. I plenty have plenty of uh, uh, kayak cattle paddles, so I'm not going to make the uh, paddle. And then E is a gusset, and I need to uh, make two of those. So this is going to fit very easily uh, onto this uh, four by four piece of plywood. The instructions say pretty clearly that you need to use a marine grade plywood. Uh, I don't know where I would get marine grade plywood around here, so I'm not using it. <laughs> so uh, I did buy an expensive piece of plywood. This is birch, and I expect this to be uh, reasonably waterproof. Additionally, I'm planning on sealing with some epoxy, so I should be okay. I'm going to glue the uh, paper to the plywood using this uh, general trim adhesive. Probably way more than I need. Uh, probably more expensive than uh, if I were to buy what I actually need but I have it so I'm going to use it. So using a jigsaw just trying to cut these patterns out uh, instead of trying to cut each one out individually I'm trying to make paths across this wood so that uh, uh, I can be a little more efficient about it I'm hoping maybe a little less but trying for more. So just using a plain old jigsaw I've got most of my piece, or all of my pieces actually cut out, but uh, most of the way. The little notches here are for the uh, stringers, uh, the pieces that are going to connect all these together. Uh, the plans call for uh, western red cedar, and uh, I think that they should be pretty snug. So, uh, as you can probably see, one of the problems that I've had here is that the paper really didn't stick to the wood well enough so and I do want to have those cut out nicely so I'm gonna go ahead and print out some more and, uh, and mark those out a little bit better so that I can cut those uh, but since everything else is is uh, pretty much cut I think I'm gonna go ahead and sand these edges down smooth them out a little bit and then uh, and then cut those out I have the stack of, of tiled prints uh, that I ended up not using because I didn't have the, uh, the corner marks on there. But I think that it's going to be good enough for, uh, I'm just going to cut it out and, you know, place it on here so that I can get my, uh, my marks here for the cutouts. If I were to start this project from scratch, I would have glued these uh, sheets on with like some Elmer's glue or something like that instead. That was a mistake to try to use that spray on glue. Too much of the paper was just not glued down to the, uh, to the uh, wood. Now I have all my cross members cut out uh, to my satisfaction. 
So as I finish up the cross members, uh, I threw a couple scraps of wood here in the pool. Uh, there's a few more, I guess they're in the skimmer basket. But I plan to leave them in here overnight, just to prove that this wood's going to be fine. These pieces have been floating around in the pool for 24 hours. I'll let them soak for another 24 hours. But even the smallest piece, which I think would be the first one to be affected, I mean, this wood doesn't seem to be absorbing any water. Uh, the glue certainly is not affected by it. I mean, I can get my fingernail under this uh, veneer piece here just barely, but uh, you know, it's, I'm not seeing any kind of degradation from this water at all. So, let, like I said, I'm going to let this sit in here for another 24 hours. But uh, I think that this uh, plywood's about as waterproof as anything. So, you know, the uh, the guys that make the plans for these boats, uh, they all call for marine grade plywood. Uh, and that's really wonderful if you can find it. But if you can't, uh, Home Depot, hardwood plywood, this is the birch stuff, and it seems to be just fine. So this wood's been bobbing up and down in the pool for about 72 hours now, a little bit more actually, and I don't see any degradation to it at all. Uh, the wood isn't uh, wrinkling up, you know, like uh, plywood will do when it gets attacked by the water. Uh, the glue doesn't seem to be attacked at all, other than the fact that it's wet. I really don't see any effect of the water at all. So I guess I'll let it dry out a bit before I throw it out and see, uh, you know, if anything happens, uh, you know, as it dries out. I'm not sure what would, but, you know, just to be thorough here, I guess. So this wood's been laying here drying out for a couple days. It's a little cool and humid here. Uh, South Florida, it's, uh, it's right around Christmas time, it tends to be a little bit more humid. So this wood may not be dried out all the way, but after two days, and I'm not really seeing any problem with this. So I'm calling this wood waterproof. We're going to go ahead and proceed. This is a boat that I completed about a year and a half ago, and it gets used on a very regular basis. Not quite every week. But uh, sometimes uh, when the weather's nice, more than once a week. So year and a half, and I just did the same thing. Threw a couple scraps of the plywood in the pool just to get a feeling that the stuff was waterproof. And it didn't seem to degrade. And here this is a year and a half later. And the boat's holding up just fine. So, um, I don't know. Maybe this boat lasts 8 years instead of 10 years because they didn't use marine grade plywood. But, uh, you know, I'm not seeing at least even the beginning of it deteriorating. Uh, it's got a lot of leaves on it, but, uh, uh, yeah, the plywood's not uh, degraded from, from being in the water at all. So the instructions for the kayak say that you can use two 8-foot pieces to make a 16-foot piece of cedar by scarfing it. Uh, I did some scarfing on the other boat, and... It's not super difficult, but it's fairly involved, so it's worth the time to find a 16-foot piece, I think, uh, if you can find it. Uh, it was a little bit of a pain, Home Depot, Lowe's, big box stores didn't carry it, but I did find a lumber yard that had a 16-foot piece, so we'll just go with that. Our first step is to cut our strong back to the length. The strong back is just the frame that we're going to use that everything kind of gets built to. It's not really part of the kayak but it kind of holds everything in place as we're building it up. So, the instructions say to uh, rip a 1x12 into our uh, stringers, gunnels, and uh, various other parts. Ripping a board like this can be a pain, but I think still much easier than scarfing two smaller boards. So the instructions give the locations for the plywood pieces. And I got this marked on my strong back.
So I've got my keel attached to my strong back uh, with these mounting brackets and uh, it's time to start placing these frames. So one thing I'm going to have to do here is uh, I got a file. This one actually fits pretty good, but uh, I'm going to file out these uh, uh, these notches so it fits on there properly. This one's good, but a lot of the others aren't. So I've got my gunnel down to my strong back, uh, and I've got my first and last uh, frame. I guess would be the name of that uh, on here. Now the instructions say that uh, they want you to place the uh, the gunnel, uh, which goes in the uh, top slots here. They want you to place the gunnel next, but it's also a curved gunnel, and the idea is you're supposed to laminate it so that it holds its curve and doesn't fight uh, the other stringers. Uh, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to go ahead and place. Uh, the top stringer uh, in there next. Uh, so then the idea is you place the top stringer uh, in the front and then the back, uh, one on either side obviously, and then uh, and then you uh, uh, wiggle the other uh, frames, uh, you wiggle the other frames in there and then uh, uh, and then continue to build up. But like I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the uh, I'm not going to do the gunnel. I'm going to do the second stringer next, uh, and then the stringer below that, and uh, get this uh, fastened together. So I've got all this stuff temporarily placed in here, uh, just held in the front and the back with some uh, uh, some spring clamps. But uh, yeah, that's what a kayak's going to look like. So the next thing I need to do is I need to take a measurement from the very front to the first frame. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, 27 inches. I need to double check the, uh, uh, the directions real quick. But uh, take that and then I'm going to have to trim these boards so that they sit up against the stem here flush. So anyway, uh, but it's coming along. So just using this uh, a rubber ended mallet, I kind of tapped my keel in so that uh, the front of my keel is 27 inches in front of my first frame. So the stern is supposed to be 20, uh, 21 inches behind this frame. So I'm going to need to make that cut thinking right around here. That's not perfectly symmetrical. I think it's probably close enough. I'm using this little off cut of wood to verify the slots. So I've got my bottom stringers run here, uh, you know, with clamps in the first and last frames, and just about ready to trim this. So I'm working on the stem here, and I want these chines uh, to fit as well as I can get them to fit, so that uh, uh, the plan here is I'm going to drill a hole and then glue a piece of dowel in there. So. The plans call for uh, using a screw, but I'm uh, trying to avoid screws here. So, you know, maybe it's dumb, but uh, uh, I've seen some other kayak builders, and they're talking about how it is that a traditional built kayak is exceptionally strong. So, and I could definitely see where screws aren't going to work as wood on wood, as well as wood on wood. I got my stuff lashed up here. Uh, I'm a little bit off script. The plans say to use thick and epoxy. I'm using type bond three. So uh, 
I think it's just a lot easier. Uh, you don't have to worry about mixing. If you don't mix properly, uh, epoxy doesn't set up. And type bond is uh, pretty amazing stuff. So not very traditional, but I think it'll be good enough. So I got a couple wood pegs uh, glued in here with type bond holding the, uh, the stringer in there and it's lashed. I'm going to do the same thing on the top. So I have the stringers on my stem. Uh, completed and also the stringers are complete on the stern as well. I need to cut these putt pegs flush here and then this needs to be trimmed. Uh, you know the skin's going to come across here so I'm going to need to trim this uh, this piece of cedar so that uh, it doesn't dig into the skin. But uh, I've got that lashed complete and also on the uh, stem. Uh, it's lashed complete. So I'm going to go rogue again and I'm going to start lashing these stringers. Uh, the directions want uh, the gunnels really done first but uh, I think I'm going to at least lash uh, the first uh, frame here and then the last one there so that uh, when I put the gunnels on then at least I'll have uh, a little bit more in the way of a solid uh, foundation here. So uh, there's a few other things that I'm looking to uh, to vary a little bit here. Uh, I guess that's kind of saying something since this is my first kayak that I'm actually looking to make changes. But uh, all the same, uh, that's where we're uh, going here. So I'm marking this so that I can make my cut. And I want this and not kind of protrude so that it won't cut in the skin. So before I lash this frame, just making sure that it's square to the stem and it's off a little bit here. and square to the keel. So as I lash these, I'm starting off with uh, a yard and a half or so of this uh, artificial skin air. And I'm just feeding it in through this hole around the stringer One thing that's really cool about this artificial sinew is that it's really the wax makes it really stick to makes it stick to itself. So after you've got a couple turns on, it really kind of stays there by itself. I don't know how important this is. But I'm trying to have my knots away from the outside of the boat. I'm trying to trim these strings with about half an inch or so. So that if they do loosen up a little bit, then the whole knot doesn't come loose. I got my front frame lashed in. And my back frame lashed in. And since the second to the rear one was sitting in there perfectly, uh, with no stresses or gaps or anything, I went ahead and lashed that one in as well. 
Now the other three, uh, the stringers aren't sitting in the slots yet. And I believe the reason is, is that uh, the gunnels aren't straight. So the gunnels are going to start uh, high on the bow and then start moving down and then in the center they'll be low and then they'll move back up in the stern and I believe that what's happening here is that uh, it's really the gunnels that are going to push these uh, push these last frames down so that, uh, so that everything sits properly so I don't want to lash these in yet uh, just to find out that I'm kind of fighting the next situation but uh, I think that the next thing to do is to rip the strips for my gunnels so I was checking this frame for bend and twist and I did find this one cross member uh, frame member was off center a bit so I uh, filed it over and there's a temporary spacer in there uh, but we'll make that permanent a little bit later also if, uh, if I look straight down the center of this uh, the stern is straight and true all the way to the center of these other pieces into the keel but uh, the bow does lean over uh, it's probably over about half an inch maybe three quarters of an inch at the very top there and I don't think there's anything I can do about that I believe that's due to those stringers being off a bit so anyway uh, we're probably not going to be on wake with this thing much so it might not matter, but it would have been nice to catch that a little bit sooner. As I ripped my last pieces for my gunnels, uh, I had a bunch of them snap apart. So even though I went and got a 16 foot board, I'm still going to have to do some scarfing. I've got these boards marked up about uh, 2 inches from the edge. Uh, they're a half inch. Typically, you may want a little bit more distance than that. But since these are being laminated and the scarf joint is going to be in between two other boards, I think we'll be okay. So I've got these two lined up. Uh, the one mark is here. And with this rasp, I'm going to start eating away at these boards until I get a wedge shape. So I've got this pretty close with the rasp. Now I'm going to get it flat and smooth big old piece of sandpaper on a sanding block. So you want to test fit and sand until you get a nice joint there. Not too much gaps. It's a little bit of a gap. Uh, that may be just the way it's aligned. So, But I think that'll be okay. Now we just need to glue it and clamp it and we should have a good scarf joint. By tomorrow, that should be as strong as the original board. Well, stronger than it was there anyway. The point here is that we're going to laminate these together. And by laminating, uh, we can put a bend in uh, for the uh, gunnels so that uh, the boards will be bent and uh, hold that shape without a lot of stress. So one of my scarf boards broke. And I'd like to go ahead and continue, so we're going to continue by gluing two of these uh, to the kayak first, and then we will do the third one on either side tomorrow. So, pulling it tight. So the directions call for a strap. I'm sure everyone can tell that I'm not necessarily following all the directions always. We're using the stretch strap. We'll see how this works out. But it looks like it's going to be fine.
over there. So I've got this all clamped up. Every single clamp I have is on here. And uh, we've also got this uh, stretch wrapped here. So the next step is that once the uh, uh, once this glue dries up, we're going to go ahead and put uh, another board on top. I don't think I'm even going to bother scarfing them. I think that I'll just get them on there and and uh, see how it goes. Uh, I think that the fact that they'll be glued longitudinally or along the length will add all the strength I need. There's a couple spots here where I've run out of clamps, but I'd still like to get the parts clamped. So what I'm doing, is squeezing them together, taking a piece of this packing tape. There you go. Clamping with packing tape. So I have my three thicknesses of wood uh, up to about half, uh, halfway up the uh, kayak here. Uh, this is another area, so right up until here. This is another area where I decided to go a little more rogue on this. Uh, the plan said uh, to cut these pieces into uh, two three-quarter inch uh, uh, thick pieces to make it an inch and a half. And then you laminate it with the idea that when you laminate it, it's going to want to hold its shape a lot more and reduce the stresses in the wood that's in the boat. Uh, I decided to go for three half-inch pieces. I figured that would be better. Uh, but, you know, this cedar, you know, maybe this is why it is that they suggested you do it this way. The trouble is, is the cedar was uh, uh, starting to get weak. So uh, the reason that we have, we're only halfway here is because the, uh, the board started to snap. And in fact, uh, we had a snap here even after we tested everything. So I've got it kind of glued together uh, in the hopes that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll maintain some integrity there. But anyway... Uh, I think that before I even finish gluing the uh, back half up, I might even uh, uh, start stitching and lashing some of these uh, cross members in so that, uh, uh, that we'll have something a little bit more rigid. I wish I figured this out a little bit earlier, but as these gunnels and stringers come up to the uh, bow and the stern, uh, you know, we want to have a nice uh, flat edge here. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a strap to hold these parts tight. And then, we pull the sandpaper through here. Every time I tighten it, it's a little bit more difficult to start. So I've got this uh, uh, face to my satisfaction here. So what I'm going to do, uh, since I'm using this type on glue, is you get a little bit on the surface here. I'll try to get a good bunch in this hole. Stick my dowel in here. So I've got my gunnels done. Uh, they're they're drying up right now, and I'm working on the uh, carlins. These are uh, uh, these are the top stringers where uh, the, the uh, opening for the kayak are going to be defined. So what I've done here is uh, there's this one section here uh, that goes from the uh, very front of the uh, kayak uh, to the second frame and I put a dowel in here uh, similar to the way I did the other ones uh, and it's glued up there currently drying but uh, 
I'm kind of wondering, it seems like this is a pretty aggressive bend, even for the cedar. So, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do here. Uh, I think I'll get the other piece on here and just kind of see if I can get a little bit of a feeling as to uh, how well these are going to bend in here. So I've decided to go off script again. I'm uh, go ahead and glue these pieces in here like this so that uh, uh, it kind of supports these carlins that are bending. They want to come towards the edge of the uh, kayak. So I'm uh, spend a little time here See if I can get this so it fits a little bit, uh, a little bit closer here. But I think this is uh, this is the way I'm going to approach this here. I've got the front secured here, but the carlin needs to come all the way into this groove here, and this groove here, so I'm just going to pull it in with a strap and lash it in. I'm trying to pull it in slowly. I want to make sure that this wood's not going to snap as I pull it in. The plans call for these two boards to touch here and they suggest that we uh, do some cuts in here so that we can get some better bend on it but this is another spot where I'm just kind of going to do uh, something a little bit different I'm just going to pull them in about as close in as I think I can get them and then leave it at that I don't see any reason why they absolutely have to touch there's an inch here or two and that's fine so I've got a two inch gap between these boards. I'm going to call that close enough. So, in fact, the wood's just starting to crack a little bit as I pull it in. So I'm going to trim this flush. So the same way I did in the front, I'm going to uh, just glue this piece in here. as a support to the back of the carlin. In another slight variation to the plans, I'm taking these scrap little pieces of cedar that uh, that were left over from different glue op or from different uh, stringer pieces, and I'm making the keel thicker. So I'm adding all these cross members in between the in between the frames. In addition to this one in the back. I've also got a piece in between these uh, metal stringers and I'm going to go ahead and add pieces uh, to the other places as well. I think for a minimal impact to weight it's going to truly make this, uh, this pack a lot stronger 
and a lot less prone to what the uh, author of the clans calls hogging. In other words, uh, these bent pieces causing the front and the back to, uh, to dip down. Here I am at the back of the boat. Dowling the, the back of the carlins into this frame. Slight deviation from plan again, but I think that's going to make the carlin a lot stronger. So I'm fastening my, my frames to the keel, and I could have lashed them, but what I'm going to do instead is drill a hole down here. I'm using smaller dowels here because the uh, thickness of the plywood uh, was not going to allow for a 3 8 inch dowel. On the smaller cross members, uh, I couldn't go straight down, so I'm just coming in at an angle here. Now that I have my keel attached, I'm calling this frame complete. So we need to do a uh, seat and then skin this, and the kayak should be uh, completed all together. I tried to cover all the details that I went through to, uh, to get this job done. Uh, if there's any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great day. Also, even though I made a lot of changes to these plans, I thought they were really good. Uh, if you'd like to get a copy, uh, go check them out at duckworks.com. Duckworks.com. Have a great day.